shall overcome. Deep in my heart, I do believe we shall overcome. The day he came in, where you see Hosea about the king, Abinath now in the balcony, that's when he came in. And we left there and went and met with some ministers about what could they do. One, not fear the market could be disrupted again and take your eyes off the plight of organizing the garbage workers. And how can you mobilize your congregation to see the value in now we're free of raising wages for working people and the health benefits to go with that. We talked in that meeting about the possibility of a, of a boycott. That if Loeb will not hear what we have to say, then take Coca-Cola, I mentioned, he mentions in that speech, and one the bread, we could take some big corporations that we have high consumer strength with and boycott them. If, if need be, do they use their strength, say to the mayor, that this is important, what I call redistribute the pain, so more, more people are hurting than just the garbage workers. We left there and came back to the hotel that afternoon. And he was very relaxed. Then he said, I, I really don't feel like uh, speaking tonight. And so asked me would I go and speak. And, and to say, ask him when he go and speak. And I said, I just don't have, like I'm kind of empty, so to speak. Um, if Dr. Abnath will go, he said, where have you go with him? So Reverend Cowles was there. Ben Hooks had been there. Mm-hmm. And we then, uh, around six, went over to Mason Temple. And when we walked in the door, and the people cheering, so Rab said me, so they're cheering. Not because they see us, because they think Martin is behind us. It's not us they're cheering for, you know, we laughed about that. And so we say, he has to come. He got there, and Rab gave a rather long introduction, in part kind of buy some time because they say he didn't feel like speaking. There's a picture that I got from you guys of my talking about the king. I was trying to brief him on what was happening, kind of what had happened, and the mood as we saw it. And he got it without a single note and went back through this, back through the page of history, this would be the great time to be alive. He was kind of going back to the history reflection stuff, as much what he had done earlier that day, but that day was about personal history reflection. He was kind of the philosophical, historical journey to where we are tonight. We could not have known how severe the threats were and how imminent death was. He may have known because he felt the pressures. That was a kind of transition to speech. I'm not fearing any man. My eyes have seen the glory and the coming of the Lord. And I've seen uh, the promised land. But I thought was so different about that sermon. The reaction was, I saw men crying. You know, usually the men assessed on crying in church except in the very situation. It was just like with something pathos about that moment, that time, that presentation. We didn't know what would be the final one. And then the next day, we had another relaxed day, right, in the room. Mm-hmm. And what I remember next was coming across the courtyard about six, and Reverend Kyle's came out the door first. And Dr. King was behind him. And Jesse, said, we're going to Reverend Kyle's home for dinner. You don't even have on a tie. And I said, Doc, the prerequisite for eating is an appetite, not a tie. He said, you're crazy. We laughed about that. Then he said to Bill, it must have been, what, been 10 feet from him at that time? Mm-hmm. Because you just left out the door. And he looked at him and saw Ben. The reason Ben was, he had heard Ben at the bread basket meeting play the song, Precious Lord, on the saxophone. About three weeks before, we used to play my, fresh, my favorite song tonight. And the man said, I will, Doc. And as he raised me, I said, Doc, I said, Doc. That's when it hit. And no one could see the impact of it, really. I could see it, Reverend Kyle could see it, because Reverend Kyle's was like about far as where you are from him. And it hit him and knocked him against the door. I heard someone saying, get low, get low. I remember running toward the steps. And that is this picture of Reverend Kyle's and and then some guy, I think, from the Department of Justice, I think, pointing. Remember that picture? Well, the story behind that is we were saying the bullet had to come from that way. It couldn't have come from that. So 
you know, take your guns and go go find go to where the bullet where the shot came from. That's what that picture is about. I got up then and went to the room next door and called Mrs. King. That was a long ten steps. I had the phone by the bed and said to her, um, Mrs. King, just how things got things. I said, well, Doc got shot, I think, in the shoulder. I really couldn't say what I saw. I mean, I think in the shoulder. And I'm sure in about seven, eight minutes she knew because wire service picked up real fast. As Reverend Carl says so profoundly, he was the witness. He was 10 feet from him when it took place. He was in the room. He proceeded not to hang out of the room, so he was the witness, and we all were to that extent. 